Hello everybody, welcome back to Exploring the Black Country, it's the Midlands Outdoors here. I've walked to Albury and this is one that I've wanted to come back and do by foot, to walk all the way down, tell you about all the old industry, what was once here back in the past. And as you can just see, this is actually tit for pool, starting all the way down by the road, coming down to here, to open into the big tit for pool itself onto the corner. And what's interesting with this place is that the canal once served collieries around this like, little area. I'm putting a photo map on for you now, so you can just see where the Aldi is in the corner. There have been some old coal fields onto there. There have been some old coal workings just further over the back of that way. You just see, and there was also a coal mine loading wharf somewhere just onto this corner. I don't know if the canal actually stretched any further. This so I think it possibly might have stretched further to bring gone to the coal fields where it was loaded on. But it is a really nice place, uh, tip for pools. You see, it's blooming with wildlife. I mean, if I just pan around to show you, this is tip for pools itself. You see, it's quite a lot of water birds. Got your moor hens, Canadian geese. You do see quite a lot. You see the herons over here because there is a uh, fish into it. You've got your carp, various fish life because there is a uh, fishing pegs here. You can actually fish tip for pools. But well, so yeah, we'll go into the industry now and tell you more about what this area is about. The introduction of the canals to the black country facilitated the rapid growth of local industry, who were able to transport goods all over the country along waterways. Titford Canal once served collieries on the Rowley Hills and Pratt's Brickyard, as well as the factories and maltings in Langley. Initially constructed in 1836-7 to serve the local coal mines, the canal now runs from Titford Pools. The pool itself was a reservoir made in 1773-4, collecting water running off the Rowley Hills. It is now partly underneath an elevated section of the M5 motorway. A narrow channel linked to the pools to the main Birmingham Canal navigation, but soon thus feeder was developed to allow passage of boats, the canal was made to a maximum width of 30 feet and a depth of 5 feet, with 6 locks to navigate the incline. These are known as the Jim Crow locks. And basically by the locks you will find a tip for pump house, which was used to pump the water uh, back up from the 473 feet level at Albury and the 511 feet Titford level. Bolton and Watt in a gents Mevic won the contract installed a single act beam engine in the building. A single boiler was erected in an adjoined building and later a second boiler. While the move of the coal was a prime motivator for the construction of the canal, it says there it was not long before such chemicals, oil and tar became far more important. The use of the canal by firms such as Albright and Wilson, uh, British uh, Cyanide and Midland Tar Distillers generated a significant revenue from the tolls. So you'd add all the toll offices over various parts of this canal line. As you may know what uh, a gorging station actually is, where the way the boats by the load. There's quite a few across the black country and there is actually one by me, uh, where they used to weigh the boats called the Tall Man's Office. And there is quite a lot on the, the BCM main line. If you go towards uh, Smevik, you will actually see the gorging stations just down onto there. Let's go and journey our way down and we'll tell you more industry as we get further on.
So as you see coming down from the, the main tip for Paul, just right around the corner, we've actually got the motorway, which is just crossing right away above us, just in a little while. It's very short down actually, or the fort would have been high up, but as you get to Oldbury, it is really high up when you get to the bottom, so I will show you there, and I'll tell you more about the motorway. Once the corner here, you've got the, the new Aldi, which was built. I believe that was also once part of a car mining industry many, many years ago. So you've had all the car mines onto this corner, which is why the canal was very prosperous back in the days. And what's interesting with this, if we just pan down here under the motorway, you can just see all the old sidings, just zooming right away in. I mean, check out the brick of that. That is so cool. Just imagine when this motorway wasn't even here, so it would have been all big open land at one point. Very dark under here. But it is nice just to come and check out because this is where much of the industry began, like on canal lines like this. And zooming right away, we've got even more down onto here. So the, the tip for pools extends even further down on sections like this bit here. So maybe this was all, all the coal mine loading wharves onto this side where they would have gone in many, many years ago. So there was actually quite a lot of factories down onto the canal line, well near it and the surrounding area. Many of you may remember on the internet somewhere Ham Baker and also MCR and Repetition Limited. I will tell you about this one actually, a bit of information about it. So right, if I just pan around, bear one moment. Just right around the front, somewhere over the back over there was MCL and Repetition Limited somewhere further over the back. And basically, the company was founded in 1926 by J Stone and Company, Heart Accumulator Company and DP Battery Company to manufacture repetition parts. They supplied nuts, bolts, screws and fasteners to the motor and aviation industries. They also made uh, magnetos. So basically by 1937 they advertised their wear as being special washers, uh, contact studs, sleeves, uh, pole bolts, uh, retaining nuts, there's quite a lot here, puff chambers, split cones, reduced pegs and precision uh, repetition uh, products from the bar in all metals, uh, light, I think that's uh, lighting and uh, starting equipment for marine and stationary engines. Wow, there's so much here. And in the 1950, the company was acquired by the Midland Bright Drawn Steel, an engineering company. MCL was another factory which fell victim to recession of the 1980s. There is a few photos onto it, so you can just see all these old photos. There is a bit of a, a book here, 1949. Some very old posters, which are really quite interesting. And then some more photos there, MCL uh, repetition works with uh, some people just onto there. How cool is that just to see some of the old industry, what was over there many, many years ago. So right, this is an interesting part down onto it. This is actually, uh, I think it's a memorial plaque of some kind. So it does say it in memory of Marie Smith, uh, Nee Beasley, 1922 to 2015. Lover of canals and industrial history. So you just see right there, zooming right away in. You can just see that memorial there. Pretty cool to see the man pulling something there. I guess it's something to do with a lock. But how cool is that? And then panning all the way around, you can just see the tip for pools extending all the way down that way, the canal line, which would have many years ago once more led into more collieries just further down onto the bottom. So right coming around the corner now, this is actually the main canal which goes all the way to Albury now under the motorway. It is a bit of a walk, it does go pretty of a distance, but it is a really nice walk actually because it takes you across some very old industry, Langley Maltins and a few more that I will show you. That was there many years ago. This is Jarvis Bridge, which is the first one we're coming under. But you just see how old these bridges are, constructed with very old brick. Once more, possibly 1800s maybe when this was even built and supported by new metals just right away underneath. I really do love these old bridges and you see the brick wall there, very falling apart. And most of the old bridges were there many, many years ago when the canal was in its industrial form. But I mean, you had many other companies, Hambake & Co Limited. And basically Hambake & Co were general engineers and iron and brass founders. They were established in 1893. This factory was part of a, a metal casting tradition which employed thousands of people locally. Um, this is there for over a century. 
do are makers of pen stocks, flap and uh, sluice valves and fittings for water suppliers, sewage disposal. They also make cast iron drain covers which many can still be seen in the black country today. The company was acquired by Bywater Group in 1980 and demolished in 2000. The area is now a housing estate which can be still seen as the housing estate somewhere further at the back. Here's some photos now of Ham Baker. So in the 1930s you can just see how big the estate is itself. Langley Green stations carrying uh, sluice gates for export from the east. Photograph from promotional brochure in 1930. And the stockyard at Ham Baker in 1930 just there. Ham Baker Heavy Foundry circa 1930. It is really quite interesting to see all this old industry once more. I've seen this on the internet somewhere, Ham Baker in an old black country group. The all photos are so quite cool in the foundry just right away in there. So right, quite interesting to believe Ham Baker was somewhere over the back over there. So we just come from the, the bottom part which is on there and having Ham Baker just right down the bottom. So I right, hope you found that interesting. I do love a bit of history like them old factories. And many people may remember Ham Baker. Many of the old generations may have had past family relatives that worked for Ham Baker or have old photos or history of it. But just coming further down, I mean, the canal is lovely how it goes straight in the line. You've got all these trees all surrounding. It's really full of wildlife down here. And there's sort of the housing estate, so I don't know whether Ham Baker was at the back over there. So he did mention a new housing estate zooming right away in. That possibly could be Ham Baker's site, right in the distance with all the new houses at the back. But I think we are coming to some other bridges. We've got Uncle Ben's Bridge many years ago. I will show you a photo when I get to the bottom. There actually used to be a factory there. I will try and find out what it was, but it is really quite interesting. So right, coming closer to the Uncle Ben's Bridge, you can just see there is some industry going on over the corner over here. And I've got an old photo, which I'm going to show you in a minute, of some old industry. What was just over to there, onto the corner, because the canal sort of bent round that corner. And you would have some big factory units just right away at the back. So right, here we are. Let's get a bit of a closer view for you. Let's wait for that car to go above. But there we go. This photo right here just popping on for you now. You can just see a photo of Langley Forge taken in 1970. So this was from Uncle Ben's Bridge, just right the way there. It's quite interesting to see that there's actually quite a lot of industry over there. Langley Forge, really old. So there you go, a photo of that. Compare it to now. So you can just see the canal sort of still bends around that corner a little bit. So that factory would have been where those lorries are right now, zooming right away in. And just onto there, that's actually where Langley Forge was, onto that corner. So there's another interesting photo for you. So you can just see in the Black Country days, there was quite a lot of industry along the canal line. And I mean, I did spot something even further down when I come down last time. But the wall to the Langley Forge is actually still there on the opposite side. If I just come a bit further down, you can actually see it. But just a better view of where the Langley Forge was onto the corner. So you can just see the canal sort of going to like a little basin for it and the wall to the factory is actually still there intact so you've got the outer wall if i just zoom in just right around that corner where i'm pointing that's actually the water langley forge really quite interesting to still see that is actually still there but a beautiful section to the canal line i really do love this bit just by uncle ben's bridge so right here's something interesting for you just round the corner, I did spot this on the very last visit. Maybe you may know what this is. I've been trying to find some information about it, but it looks a really old building. Panning around, you can just see here, there's a bit of graffiti on the wall. It's been boarded up many times. Bricked up onto the corner. You see, there would have been some very old windows into there. Wow. Most of the old buildings back in the days uh, were like this. I mean, many of the coal mine buildings had the same style. Mostly like all the little like shops where they made nails, chains, were sort of like the similar designs. 
coming all the way around. See if we can see some more. Might to see it a bit better from this corner. Yeah, you can just see it from this angle. How cool is that? So whatever this was, was it uh, you know, a, a gorging station for the canal line here? But I can't see it being a gorging station though because usually they're coming to like a toll island where the boats come over our cross. But well, that's interesting once more. Definitely feel free to pop it in the comments on what you think that is. Very old black country building. One more check out for you. So I've right, come up to the most interesting industry that was on the canal line many, many years ago. I don't know whether many of you have heard of Langley Maltins and Langley Maltins date so old, a very old brewery. I will show you from the side of the road. I'm gonna go down there then back onto the canal line and I will tell you a bit of history about it. But just right away in front, we've got another bridge. This is actually New Inns Road Bridge. Very old, I will just show you underneath it. But once more, that's potential 1800 star bridge once more. Really cool, and how it goes under, it's got like another arch underneath. Let's quickly show you this one. Just right away here on the corner. This is definitely very old. You can just see right the way there, the arch is going all the way up. I'm guessing this was constructed to support the bridge a bit more better. So you just see it from that angle. I mean, very old, all the brick wall into that side down onto here. Quite cool to see that. And then panning right the way around, you've got Langley Maltins. It is in a very dilapidated state, Langley Maltins. It did actually set on fire going back years and years ago. So imagine before that fire, Langley Maltins would have been in a really good state. So you can just see it a bit more better from this angle, zooming right the way in. There's Langley Mortons onto the canal line. But where we're going to go and check out first is basically up the road. And I'm going to go and check out Langley Mortons from the main road section onto the corner. So uh, I've never really even been down this road before. This is the first time I've been here. So I'm guessing just right away in front, all oh, this is all Langley now. Some really old buildings just right away in front. Those do look dilapidated. I think there is some other works right away the back, which are really old. Can't see a stack for it. But Mill Lane, that is really quite interesting, was the industry once more onto these corners right away here where they built all the new houses, sort of. But where we can go, and it's just down this road onto the corner, Langley Green Park and Ride, so you can go that way to terminate down there. So right here we are. I'm guessing this land is used, it was at one point dilapidated and proper abandoned. So you can just see it is a, a motor in place now. Zooming right away, you can just see Langley Mortons onto that corner there. It's all been boarded up now, you can't get into there. But what fascinates me is with the design of the building, how old it really is. I and mean, you can just see the very top, very old. And then an old photo, what I've seen on the internet, you can just see it's still the same, but at the moment it's nice just to still see the buildings itself. It's coming round a bit further more. Wow, you can just see it as uh, suffered a fire on the very back buildings onto that corner. There's actually some stairs leading right away at the top up to there. Leading right away in. Just up to that corner there. And this is actually where Langley Morton suffered a fire. Right the way there. So if I just zoom in, you can just see it from this angle. Right away there, that's where Langley Morton sat on fire in that building. I'm guessing spread all over this building, caused it to go in a very bad state. But how cool is that to see Langley Mortons for that corner? But let's get back down to the canal and I will show you from that corner. But it does really interest me to see the views of this. I mean, I've got an old photo, which I'm going to show you now of Langley Mortons overlooking this section right away here. But it's a shame what it's like that and, you know, he never repaired it after the fire just left it over so many years because as you know buildings fall into disrepair start falling apart as nature starts taking back onto these old trees going out the side of this bit onto the corner but it's just so old it's just nice to see an old black country building on the canal line but you don't really see much of this like most of all the old stuff has gone now but panning back around you can just see there is some uh, windows blocked off right away at the top I'm guessing when it was operating, they've had some sort of like lifting system to lift things from the bottom to bring to the top. It's really quite cool. If I zoom in, that's what I was on about. 
that window there so I'm guessing they would have lifted stuff up because it is a really tall building to get from one floor to the other and that is actually quite a tall one right away there so right Langley Mortins also known as Sharrell's Mortins finally closed in 2006 the building's day from 1870 with two parallel three-storey ranges of mortin floors with six kilns at East End near Titford Canal. They were severely damaged by arson in 2009, like I mentioned, it suffered a, a really bad fire. This was one of the last mortins to, to use the traditional floor mortin method, whereby grains of barley were doused with water, spread over the floor, then turned regularly to ensure even germination. Walter Shower worked in a chemist shop in Albury. He married Sarah Hartill, the daughter of Master Miller, and in 1870 he established a brewery with land at uh, Crosswells, uh, where there was a spring dating from medieval times, the well of uh, the Holy Cross. Some pictures on once more so you can see Langley Mortons, very old, across the canal line, and there's some mortars there, really interesting. The Mortons were erected on the side of the Titford Canal to supply malt to his new brewery. A hundred yards away across the rail line, this was one of the largest breweries in the area, and Shell's ales were distributed throughout the Midlands. Local barley was used in the malting process, uh, supplemented with grain brought in by barge. So you can just see back in the Black Country days, a lot of stuff was brought across the canal lines. Lots of the Langley Mortons, which is onto the corner. And then later goods was brought by rail that's why there's actually a rail line which i'm going to show you in a minute in the early 1900s they began distilling gin at the brewery today the crosswell site is owned by alcohols limited only one of six independent gin distillers in the uk they source up to 16 different botanicals to flavor their spirits including juniper berries coriander seeds citrus peel uh, licorice root and cassia angelica or this bulb root quite a lot here. The distillery itself suffered a de devastating fire in 2012. There is no operation again producing around 1 million bottles of gin a week. So it does go from Langley Mortons tying into some other industry which is really quite cool. So there we go, that's Langley Mortons and it, the reason why it did suffer another fire is because it was placed onto uh, 28 days later urban exploration and that it was targeted by arson. Now people found that it was derelict, made the way in and I'm guessing by viewing it, that building suffered uh, really well against the fire because it isn't in a bad state. This is the building what really collapsed bad from the fire, just right around the corner. So that, many, many years ago, would have also looked like that in very good condition. Really quite cool. So I will just pan around, I'll give you another view of the Langley Mortons from the canal section just onto the corner. So you just see very big land stretches right away in at the back got some more buildings right away over there but really so cool glad i've showed you this one i really do love uh having a look at the old buildings across the canals like this really interesting so right that's uh, all the industry covered on this section now we're going to move down got our brought and wilson we've got some other things down onto here so we've also got a rail line which is coming up i'm going to get up the bridge and i'm going to go and try and get to the top of it and tell you some history about it but if i just pan around you can just see coming right away up is that old rail bridge and it is mad to still see that is even still standing after it was disused and there it is zooming right away and there's the old rail bridge onto the top Let's get to the top of it and we'll see if there's any old remains or what it's like from above. So right here we are, so you can actually cross and make your way up to the, the line itself. I'm guessing this is really overgrown, I've only ever been up here once. So many years ago this would have been blocked off when the train was operating. Right here we go, a lot of bramble up here. So this is it, so when the train was uh, operating I'm guessing was it running on this side? Oh wow, as if there's actually still a track still left onto it. There's the rail track, which is intact. How cool is that? When I come last time, I couldn't see that. It was just so overgrown. And there you go, there's evidence of the old rail line, which run all the way through and then to the side of Langley Mortons, which is onto the corner. Really quite cool to see that, I've enjoyed. And I really do love train stuff, as you may know. I've caught a video on Dowry Daly now, I mean and stuff like this is so fascinating and many of the viewers love old rail lines once more. 
So well, there is a bit of history here. I'm just uh, panning down, checking out the history on my phone. Um, I found a bit about it actually, the Albury Branch Railway it was called. It was a short branch line which ran from Langy Green on the Birmingham to Worcester via Kidderminster line to the town of Albury. It also served the Albury division of the manufacturing company Albury and Wilson which we come up to in a little bit. It was owned and operated by the Great Western Railway, GWR. So the opening of the, the line itself, you can just see once more this photo from here of the, the bridge which is just down the bottom on the Titford Canal. The Dudley and Albury uh, Junction Railway was incorporated on the 21st of July 1873. Wow, that's going back quite a bit. For a line from Langley Green, Dudley to Hells Owen, like I mentioned or covered the video on Diary Dale, the line was quite interesting how far it really did go to Lungbridge, that section down there. But this one um, said there was also to be two branches. The company entering the working agreement with the GWR in 1876. On the 11th of August 1881, the name was altered to the Albury Railway. The line was opened for goods in 1884 and to passengers the following year. All oh, right, so they actually used passengers across this line. Services were operated by the GWR under working agreement of 1876. The Arby Railway was fully absorbed by the GWR following an act of the 31st of July 1894. The line was built in 1885 by the GWR and was built on a short stub line near the present day, Howells Owen Street. There was also a goods yard on an embankment via bridge on Seven Stars Road, a short distance north of the station. Panning all the way down the closure, why did it actually close? The station at Albury had a very short lifespan, closing in 1916. Um, as a result of the First World War, and never reopened. Although a line remained in use for goods traffic and to the local factories until the 1960s, when this section from Albury and Wilson, Albury Division, to the site of Albury was uh, served by the building of the M5 motorway. So then when that was built, this line was then actually disused. This meant the stub north had to be closed, but the section near Langley Green remained open for freight traffic until 1996, when the entire line was put out of use. So the present day now, uh, the station at the site of Albury has been redeveloped for both industrial use near the former goods yard and the station site is now a Mecca Bingo Hall. So the Mecca Bingo is actually down by the road where I'm going to get the bus back, just down into Albury. So there you go, that's actually the, the rail line. I really do find stuff like this really quite interesting. But if I just pan down and show you once more the old rail track onto the corner. Absolutely amazing, that bends all the way around. It will rejoin down the canal somewhere down the bottom. Wow. So right, we're gonna make our way down the canal now and let's go and journey further on across the Titford Canal.
So right, something really interesting now that I want to talk to you about. Over the back over here, which you can just see a plot of land over onto that corner there. Just calculated it where it was on the, the maps, what I was just looking at. That was like Kialbright and Wilson, further the distance towards the middle, just over to there. And it was a big massive plant, I'll just tell you a bit of information about it. So basically, Albright and Wilson was founded in 1856 by Arthur Albright for the production of uh, potassium chloride and white phosphorus for the match industry. It was to become one of the largest chemical works in the country and during the First World War it turned its expertise uh, to making phosphorus bombs. Apart from phosphorus, uh, phosphorates and other related chemicals, the company produced uh, uh, suffocants, uh, paper uh, pulp bleaching chemicals and process and paper sizing chemicals. It became a supplier to many industries such as detergents, toiletries, paper, metal finishing, uh, food, agrochemicals and textiles. Covering 60 acres of land, the factory is still in operation today. Oh well, so it's making me wonder, is Albright and Wilson, all this into the distance I will try and show you, is it these stacks sticking right the way up them? Is it still in use? Right away in the distance over to there, you can just see a few stacks sticking right away up. Is it the factories that are right away at the back? Really cool to see that on that text, it's still in use. So right, get that information back up in um, one moment. Really interesting. So as part of the Solvay Chemical Group, this site employs 220 people producing around 150 products, exporting over half of these products to every continent of the world. So there's a picture on for you now, so there, um, a souvenir brochure in 1949. So it's panning all the way down. You can just see some more really interesting photos of the factory itself. This one, a uh, phosphorus plant at Albury 1967. Some more photos just down onto there. So it is really interesting. So what is the site today? Is it still part of the company or is it something different? So right, I'm not sure if you can see it. It is really hard to judge this. But zooming back in, can you see the stack over the distance over to there? Just through this netting. That is actually known as Solvay, Solvay Group. Um, the Albury site, so it says there, this site was established in 1851 by Arthur Albright, as mentioned in history, and became part of the Solvay Group in 2011. Albury is the oldest uh, Solvay site worldwide. Well, so that's actually what that is in the distance. But I mean, all the industry along the canal line, it's just so amazing to see how far it really does date back what they did. And this canal line with coal mines, factories like Albright and Wilson using the railway, using the canal. You even had the, the Ambaker down the bottom. So I've really learned quite much today about the factories and seeing the old photos. But the canal is coming nearly to the end of the line. We're coming up to a pump house now, which uh, goes on the right. Then it goes straight down and then under the motorway. Well, I mean, a, a design of the pumping station reminds me of one of those coal mining um, houses where they pump the water out, sort of like similar. So they've got into sort of a similar design. That's what I always thought it was every time I come down, but it's one of them old fashioned pumping stations for the canal line. Like I mentioned at the start, I did tell you a bit of history behind it about something that was built inside there with some dates. But if I just pan around, I'm guessing you can actually go inside this at a certain time of year. Uh, my mum did tell me you can come and check this out and she said if you ever got time go and see if you can go inside it so it is sort of similar to the one that's down the BCM main line the Galton Valley pumping station but you imagine the Galton Valley is much more older into the pumping station itself but wow I just really do love the old buildings and this is another good example of an old black country building along the canal line so right this coming right away up this is actually another old bridge just right in front or the canal section down here is actually known as the Jim Crow branch, Titford. And the Jim Crow and Claytons of Arby branches, uh, Titford, some information here. Towards the top of the Arby locks, there is a branch leading off to the right, which is this one, where it used to be led into the Jim Crow chemical works. The phosphorus pollution entering the canal from the chemical works was immense, as could be seen from the first aerial footage below. So you just see this photo here of all that pollution just into the canal itself. These days the pollution is gone, but the name lives on as the locks are referred as locally as the corral. Oh well, I never really knew that. And Jim Crow branch staying with the white pollution once more. Chemical works on the Jim Crow branch. Uh, 
the atmospheric view up the Jim Crow branch just right away there. We've got a photo there, uh, Blakely Hall Bridge at the f foot of the Crow before the M5 motorway deck was added. So you just there, the building of the M5 motorway. Got the Midland Tardis still is in 1964, and you've got the, the Clayton boats, which also served down the Warsaw Canal, Riders Green. There was a, a Midland Tardis still is down Riders Green. As mentioned in my Exploring the Black Country Warsaw Canal video, you might, if you want to go and check that out, go and watch that one more time. I do mention and show you some more photos of it. Got Clayton's Yard in 1955, um, just right there, more photos of Clayton's Yard, Clayton's of Albury. Um, panning right the way down, repair yard, that's what quite interesting. Uh, the crow bottom block just right the way there, so that's actually viewing up this way. You can see some very old factories right away at the top. I think you can just see parts of our Brighton Wilson, not too sure. Um, panning all the way down, the crow top block being brought back into service, which is actually this one right away next to here where the pumping station is. So there we go, there's some more really old photos and some really interesting information about the canal line which stretches right away in front. So right, this is it, we're coming to the end of the Titford Canal now, coming to the Birmingham Old Line. So that is the Titford Canal, so I've covered a nice little video for you there, of all the old factories. So now we've got some interesting parts on the Birmingham Old Line to show you some old photos of what this looked like when the motorway wasn't even here. So here we are, we're on the BCN Old Line now. This is actually the section which tells you Titford Pools, two and a half miles, six blocks. Tiffa Pump House, the top block, which is right away down there. So you can just see, you had all the, the Midlands Tar Distillers onto that corner, just right around the back. I can just see the top of the pumping station, just right away in the distance over to there. But this line is so interesting because there's much history behind the BCN old line. As you may see in my old videos, I covered the video of this one, and the BCN, the main line, which runs all the way through. But from this angle here, which was on about, you can just see the bridge which runs all the way across, zooming right away in onto that corner there. This is actually a very old photograph taken in the old days when the M5 wasn't even here. That was actually a bit of a different design, that bridge just right away down on the back, the Arbor Junction Bridge. There was a boat crossing onto that corner, you can just see the canal going over there. We've got some big works onto the corners really interesting old photo so i thought i might have showed you that because it is interesting to see what this area was like back in the old days especially when the motorway wasn't even here as you can see now i mean they have done repairs on the motorway quite a few times they've got the scaffolding back up once more and there's some interesting things because i mean you've got old bridges like this this is an old bridge what may have led into an old factory many many years ago just onto that corner so was that actually part of the midland tar distillers is that where this actually went to would be quite interesting to know and you see there some old like uh, ladders leading right away up so right there was actually a photograph taken by the anchor bridge which is on this side here so i guess it would have run somewhere along here and it says there the boatman bill cresswell and his family at hales boat lard and you see the photo by anchor bridge albury in 1934 Hale's Boatyard closed in the 1950s and relocated to Stourport and the whole site was demolished. Industrial units stand here today. So as you can just see, this is where Hale's Boatyard was actually situated onto the corner as it's mentioned, quite a lot of industrial units. You've got DPD down on the back and then you've got all these ones. This, is, this was about where it was, I believe, onto the corner, somewhere down onto here. So there we go, you can just see quite a lot of old industry 
Well, that's the video for today. I hope you've really enjoyed this one. I've got a bit of a journey back to go all the way through to Albury. I'll, I'll get some cinematics for you. I'll do some cinematics as I head back home towards the bus stop. But yeah, what a day. I'm glad that rain has really kept off. It's been a brilliant day for filming. But the buses this morning were so terrible. It took me over two and a half hours to wait for a bus and it never turned up, so I had to go further down. I only realised I changed the, the bus stop where it actually was. It goes a different route now. So yeah, finally managed to get here and do it. So let's head all the way back home, enjoy the rest of the cinematics and see you again soon. The Midlands Outdoors out.